value as company I guess. Uh, so the reason that company actually sold what's called a pure data for analytics appliance is because it's based on FPGAs, it's based on completely different ways in which this array is laid for you to have, you understand the I/O operations per second, right? You have the data, great. How do you retrieve it? For you to, you have processing power, good. <laughs> Where is the data coming from in real time? You need those many disks to be able to give that data. You know there is a difference between OLTP and OLAP. The online transaction processing is different than online analytic processing. OLAP behavior is easier to handle, random transactions are difficult to handle. And that way if you do not have something like a memory in databases, it becomes much more difficult, right? If you got the spinning disk where the spindles are going to move, it is going to be more, much more difficult. So the next thing that we talk about is these accelerators like Natija or Neteja or the appliances. So the appliances in warehouse, the appliances in data models, the appliances in query equipment, the appliances in every data modeling. Data modeling is the way you store the data. In a data warehouse, you are going to have a data model. I will give an example of data model. Not many heads are shaking, so I will give an example of data model. Let us say you have a warehouse. The warehouse got 50 products. One product is electronic products, right? There is a disk and there is a TV and there is a projector and there is a keyboard and all of it. Would you just dump it in the warehouse? Dump it and then this frantically go and find one mouse. You never want to do that, right? You would probably have one ale where there are only mice. You will have one ale where there are probably just the disk. You will have one ale where you will have something else, right? Basically, that's there is a model behind it. You build a model, right? You probably would not realize it, but you build a model. And the way the query is going to work is that, oh, I need a mice. I need to go three ales to the right and two ales to the left, whatever it is, right? That's what you are doing. And you can optimize that query. I need this more often, bring it in the front near the door. You are building up a query optimizer. In a way, that is a data model, but those are data models that you do. Oops. Uh, that was the last slide anyway, but I will quickly go to it because I was talking about this. So, on the top of it, what you see is the visualization which is very important, the reason I said this visualization from the calling data pattern is uh, A calling B and one of the callers of B calling C and all of that, right? So there are visualizers like PC, there are visualizers like Ray, there are visualizers like IQ and all of these visualizers are extremely important because that has become a technology by itself. The interpretation of a data or human ability to consume the data is related to the visual interpretation of the data. So, it is going to be what we call as a multi-dimensional representation of a data. It is not two-dimensional, it is not three-dimensional anymore. And that multi-dimensional visualizer is the visualization techniques that we are talking about to the different application development and the ecosystem development. And the ecosystem is, you know, Android is what Android is because of the ecosystem of that operating system and because it is open. There are unprecedented applications which are being developed. This is exactly what we are saying that it is not the business coming with a problem which IT solves. It is the IT which is creating a different business opportunity. You know what I mean, those of you who probably will go to US and will stay in US as well. One of the biggest difficulty that I had in US is in a huge mall, I go and park my car which had no pillars or no storage spaces to mark. And then maybe I come back from a completely different door and you are backward. You do not know where the heck you park your car. In that big ocean, you have to search for 10 to 15 minutes, nothing less than that. Now, that is the reality. With your cell phones, there are so many apps coming in this open ecosystem. All that you have to do is that go to the car and you know press a button on your cell phone. It locks with a GPS and it says this is the kind of a lat long, azimuth, elevation, whatever it is. And then you go back wherever and say guide me back to the car and you come back to the car, wherever you smart, right? Is that the application of your cell phone got developed? No. Was it because of LASIK surgery that somebody invented lasers? No. LASIK came much later. That was a business proposition which was precision cutting. I will do precision cutting, I am going to invent lasers. That is not the way it happened, right? So, that is exactly what we are talking about, which is a different application which is a form ecosystem. And the ecosystem bolsters and fosters with partners. And they are the partners who bring in an innovation on that open system. And that is what we are talking about this as a platform where many vendors 
many independent software vendors will come in and build their applications and these applications are truly unprecedented. Today we are talking about something which is trying to measure you maybe the blood pressure with your cell phone. I don't know whether you tried that app. I don't know how good it works but there is an app which tries to actually give a pulsating thing out of the flash and it tries to measure passing it through the veins of a finger and says okay this is your pulse or this is your maybe tomorrow they will find blood sugar what it is right. But that is the fact right. You have a device, you have an open platform, you have an open platform and then there is an entire ecosystem which is developed. Uh, so this is for me my last slide. I will just in introduce few of the IBM products because I have been in IBM for a while. Whether it is from data warehousing to the streams computing which is real time information handling to the information retrieval and Hadoop. How many of you heard about Hadoop? How many of you have not heard about Hadoop? Okay, you've been honest. You know what normally happens? Normally, when I go for any of the talks, the first thing which I ask is, "How many people are there?" Four half hour later, how many people are there? One and half hour later, there are forty people there. The rest of the people are mathematical functions. They are not. That's normally what happens. But you're honest, are there? The Hadoop system is basically it's an Apache Hadoop, and the reason Hadoop is gaining importance, particularly for unstructured. You know why is unstructured? Why do we need to handle unstructured data? I talked about it, right? Why is it so difficult? Any guesses how difficult is that unstructured data? Variables are more. Uh, one is variables are more. Not in the same format. So it's it's same not at all in the format. It's yes. appearing in the image form. Right, right, right. It could be scanned document, different pixel densities. No tags. Different objects. Absolutely. I'll tell you one of the simplest problems that I started tackling, right? And that is a problem which is probably, maybe probably, I am not saying 100 percent, but probably human beings can understand to an extent, even humans won't understand. Let us say, if I ask somebody at random, how do you define an address? How do you find an address? I give a written text, a document, a word document, and I will ask you to identify all the addresses in that document. I do not know whether you, yourself, or I myself will be able to do that, and we ask some computers to do it. A very simple thing, right? You have a written text, not even an email, text, English that is not Arabic and I am asking to find an address. So, you will start setting a rule, right. Anything which says apartment or house or a hash or a note or number is where the address starts, right, something like that. Anything which ends in something which looks like a zip code or a pin code or you know six digit number or three digit space three digits or only three digits or hyphen two digits. All of that is a pin code, that is where it stops. Sometimes maybe there is no pin code, you do something called an address master, something like XYZ master. You will do an XYZ master which is state master, right. Now the state master will have variants of state master. AP can be written as Andhra Pradesh, AP is a wrong example, things are changing in AP. Let us say Maharashtra state, you can write MH Maharashtra, Maharashtra state, M dot S dot, M dot space dot, all of this, right. Let us say the address stop at that and all the variants of everything, right. You don't believe that, you know, people write address I told you, Neo Shivalaya Temple Tumkur, that is the way people write address, right. Now you really go down in all of that information and finally you find an address which is 5 pages long in a 10 page document. Because you start looking at a house number, you went all the way till you find some hit. 5 pages later you find a hit of one state. Yes, I, yes, I got an address, okay. What good use that address, right. That is why the data quality comes in, we just got to throw it away. The reason we call it data stage and data quality, which is the initial part of the entire information management, you got to throw it away because it is not an address, right. But that is what we talk about in unstructured data. Even in a structured text, leave alone changing face signatures and trying to find something, right. So that is unstructured data handling, and unfortunately, that is 80 percent of the data, and that is the data which is really growing. The platform which really does all of that, and the one which is gaining a good market share is. The only way we can handle this big data, which is coming in huge volume, is by trying to use a commodity software rather than using mainframes. And the commodity software, the way you do it is what is called map reduce, which is you map a problem, you distribute the problem, and there are underlying assumptions, of course, over here. There is something called GPFS, you heard about that, right? For any scalable database, which is DB2PS scale, Oracle real application cluster, you distribute the nodes. <laughs> you know the largest system in the world, the largest system in the world has got, you know about the sockets and the posts, right. 
you get two core singles socket, four core, six core, eight core, twelve core, sixteen core, and that's where it starts. And then you can have one single blade, which is a standard 40 to 19 inch fan, which can go only up to 64 core stops. If beyond 64 cores, you want to have database to be scaled, particularly for OLG, but not for OLA, you need a system which is scalable, which needs to have a point system which is shared, which is GPFS, right? The general parallel file system. It obviously has to use something similar, which is Hadoop file system, which is HDFS. And of course, there is then Jack 12 and Pig and I and many things which came up. So anyway, that's finally what I really wanted to share. Uh, there are two more slides which are not good. This is interesting, so I'll use this in the last slide. And let me read this. <laughs> well, this is a joke, guys. Right? I thought you will allow, but you will smile right there or whatever it is. I didn't get any Colgate smiles on this. But this is actual statistics. What it basically says is the depth by PowerPoint, which is what I am doing with all these four points here is as bad as it's better to have alcoholic lunch in France. There's only one country in the world which gives you alcoholic lunches in offices and that's French, right? It's worse than that, right? And it says add to that more than 50% of business data is locked away, locked away in the PowerPoints, which cannot be retrieved. It's not only unstructured data, it's a data which is so cryptic that it's locked away. Anyway, that was supposed to be Joe based. Uh, thank you very much. I can probably have a very quick Q&A, but I crossed my one hour which was allotted to me. I hope it was useful. I tried to touch a few things here and there at random probably. Any questions, comments? And be free to tell me, shut up and just walk away. That's okay. Yes, sir. Uh, the biggest customer obviously would be a human being out of this. Biggest customer. So, how the smart homes are going to be in the near future? Yes, yeah, it's already happening. It's already happening at some time. So, the whole concept of. I'm so glad you was the word smart because IBM evangelizes with the word smarter. This is a smarter retail, smarter commerce, smarter homes, smarter meters, smarter energy, right? So what we believe is the smart homes are going to do is, there are many things that we normally, so the initial thing that people think of is, have some kind of a remote control device with which you can turn on your TV, turn on your geyser, turn on your air conditioner, those are all passe, I mean those are all simple things, right? Now we are really talking of something which can smartly control your electric consumption. It can level your electric consumption or smartly tries to shut down or smartly calls anybody. So what if? You are, let's say you are travelling into the Bahamas or into the Hawaii's and there is a thunderstorm which is going and uh, your house which is all wooden houses in the US in particular, right? And your house is at risk and uh, you may have to take some action and you have no clue about it, right? It's not just about an interior coming and then the interior alarm system is trying to call you as soon as you are having an SMTP gateway and that's again a pass We are looking at a house which has served by itself. You know, I talk about the smarter systems like an appliance like Nathijan. Uh, there is an appliance called Pure Systems or Pure Application System, Pure Data System, Pure Data Hadoop, all of that, right? It's Pure Systems. We have one of those Pure, we have one of those pure Systems in our uh, Innovation Center. Last December, which was near 25th of December, right? Uh, typically, most of the corporates are 80% off, you know, hardly 10%, 15% staff works. Unfortunately, what happened is that one of the manual signals went wrong in the lab and instead of shutting off one of the air conditioners which should have been off, yet another air conditioner is off. There was nobody in the lab and that was unfortunately Friday evening. Nobody noticed it. This smart appliance which was a pure application system, pure application system has everything redundant. Like system Z has everything redundant, system Z does many magical things. Uh, system, this pure system does many magical things. When the temperature rose, the temperature is sensed at each blade and finally it is passed onto the top of the rat networking and the networking stopped because it could be corrupt data, it could be delayed data, what it is, right? The next thing that it does is systematic shutdown of the storage. All the SVG stops, all the canisters stops, all the spinning disk stops. Then it comes to each rack and stops it. The houses actually stop itself and shut down, not just call you. 
the houses actually cut down the electric supplies into the entire locality. So if the thunderstorms comes in, there is no electric related accident. It's not about a damage. It's about the sparks which can probably put something on fire, particularly in the building houses. Right? So we basically, basically talking of uh, the entire smartness which can be built as if you were there in the house, what, what could you do? The house is doing all by itself. It would be within a mile or so. Every house must be a smart house. It's a connected system if you really look at it. You know, in India, we don't really see as connected systems, unfortunately. But uh, I'll just give an example of the connectivity. I used to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, sometime back in 96, 97. And uh, there was a huge snowstorm, which normally doesn't happen over there. And the city wasn't geared up for that. So the electricity went away, UPS came on. UPS went away, backup UPS came on, backup UPS went away, nothing came on. And then for the first time, the city lights were off. It took Raleigh City Corporation one week to restore city lights, traffic lights, stop lights. Sounds ridiculous? Because in Bangalore, the traffic lights goes away every night and it comes back every day. And then there is a manual cop who looks at the traffic and says, switch to on and off, right? Those lights are synchronized. That entire system is synchronized. If you really go at a particular speed, if you get the first green, you are expected to get all greens. And it's synchronized in that extremely complex pattern, right? We're talking of the systematic shutdown, which starts shutting as the thunderstorm passes and starts coming up again as the as is gone, right? It really does the same thing for anything. It does it for uh, water. I mean, not just for flooding, which happened in a uh, few of the states, right? It basically it's, the smartness that we're building today is beyond just about switching off some devices and all. It's about acting on its own to become autonomic. That's the smartness. That's already being built. Nowadays, you say that a lot of data is generated and stored in memory. More than terabytes of uh, devices, etc. So, what is the technology in this uh, memory? Sure. So, the question is there's a lot of data generated. How will you store it, right? Now, there are multiple ways of storing it and multiple ways of using it. Uh, again, it depends on whether it's an OLAP system or an OLTP system, right? Uh, if it is just an analytic processing system, which means that I have a huge data and I want to find a pattern like a CDR pattern, right? Truly speaking, it's not real time. So, whether I offer you a promotion today or one hour later or one day later or maybe three days later, it really doesn't matter, right? So the storing can be done in a standard magnetic disk and it comes in multiple flavors which is basically 10k, 15k and 20k RPM. The world hasn't gone beyond it. And it comes in 300 GB, 600 GB and you get multiple platters right? in any storage system. And then you talk of multiple types of the storage system like tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, the different RAID configuration from RAID 5 to RAID 5, 0 to RAID 6, 0, right? There is another way of storing the data which depends on your OLTPs which is like SAP HANA, which is like IBM to your system. That is a memory resident database is like Apache DB. And the reason it is needed is it's more of a technology which is memory residency for you to have random access and a faster access because the processing needs to search. Now the third retrieval and storage, if you could be really talking about, is obviously the backup and restore, right? You have the TSM backups and you keep it somewhere in backup and you retrieve it back when you really need it. Uh, but yes, it is a problem. To be honest with you, if you're really talking about the rate at which it is growing, our technology in the spinning disks has not gone beyond that 20k RPM and that's going to be a problem. That's why there has to be a disruptive innovation which is required there. Uh, though I say SAP HANA and though I say any other memory resident databases which uses anything like uh, the SSD kind of a technology, the storage devices technology, uh, SSDs or flash technology, that's extremely costly. So, feasibility is limited, pragmatic feasibility is limited. Is it an Oh no, there is no similarity in that. Is it an is where SAP can claim that it's a file system by itself and it's a database by itself. Uh, basically, it's a memory resident, I should call it a story rather than a database, right? So let me give an example. What we do, there is a technology called easy tiering. Uh, what, what the technology basically enters is something like caching. So if you've got spinning disk, 
the data which is normally accessible and normally accessed and predictably going to be accessed can be brought from a spinning disk to SSDs along with the compression and you can still get up to 8x compression and 3x speed in your high operations per second which you can with 10% SSDs well it's a good thing to have however if you really want to truly random access in a completely over TP system then you need a complete system which is going to be SSD based, which is what SAP hardware is. Hadoop, on the contrary, is just a methodology, which is a computing methodology, in which I have problem which can be divided to 10 parallel problems, which then can be given on a particular file system across 10 nodes, built in a resiliency over there, which is built in the governance on top of it, which is the basic map reduce, and then get that entire collide that result back again using a commodity hardware. Uh, a typical problem in which a Hadoop can be used, particularly for unstructured data analytics, something like the genome analysis problem, uh, any mathematical computation like array processing, matrix inversion problem, image processing problem, right? Uh, SAP HANA is different use case, typically it is a business transaction system, transaction, not analytic system. Sir? Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, file system. Yeah, it's a general parallel file system. And the whole concept over here is, as you really need more and more compute form, uh, you're basically having something like a grid computing, for instance, or a workload balance cluster in a way, uh, which has a parallel access to the same data, and which has its own resiliency, which is built in. What if one node falls down? You have a way to build it back again. There is a big hype about big data, <laughs> okay. Uh, but how many businesses today have the big data, big problems, right? If I really look at today, immediate today rather than tomorrow, I would start with analytics and then go to big data. So there are three technologies here emerging beyond a certain point. Uh, the first one which you talk about as the analytics, then the big data, and then the cloud. So when you talk about Hadoop, Hadoop is actually leading towards cloud, not necessarily in software, not necessarily in infrastructure or uh, platform systems, but it's kind of leaning towards distributed computing, cluster computing, which is well managed, uh, well orchestrated, well governed, well secure, all of that, right? Uh, so I should start, I would start with analytics. Um, let me tell you one thing. IBM spends, at least IBM spends, I know because I've been with IBM for the last 20 years, IBM spends about kind of billion dollars in uh, research every year. And then what we produce is something which is if I have to place my best bets on, if I have a crystal ball and if somebody could gaze at a crystal ball, that's IBM. Because it's been there for the last 100 years, right? There are only three companies which lasted for 100 years. There's Ford, G and IBM. So when we gaze at a crystal ball, we share that with the world and that's called GTO, Global Technology Outlook. Every year we produce an outlook for the technology and analytics is right in the top. So there is, there is a notion which is, or there is a word which is called as CAMS. Uh, you might, might have heard about it, which is called C-A-M-S-S. You all heard about it, CAMS? You heard about SCAM? SCAM, twisted is CAMS. And there is a bad SCAM, which is a big data analytic scam. Big analytic data, bad SCAM. SCAM is basically CAMS. SCAMS is cloud, analytic, mobile, security, social. CAMS. If you want to be future safe, Cams. That's the way to get that crystal ball. Your future safe for next 10 years, not for 20 years. I guess uh, I'll just take one last question. Well, if not, thank you very much.